amazing. We've got Luke Holland here. This guy's breaking down more aspects of the cinema. Um, play along that you've done, yep. which has gotten you some serious traction, rightfully so. We talked a lot over the last few days, <laughs> or the last day, I guess, just about people that hate on stuff. And oh, yeah. I'm it's, sure it's people great. have hated on this, but there's a lot of people who love this, what you're about to demonstrate for us, which is your kind of like your own version of a blast beat, I guess. Exactly. It's just uh, taking a rudiment, and rather than doing the proper way, which is having the dynamics to it, yeah. you just take all the ghost notes up to a 12-inch stroke, which makes it sound like a blast beat. It so sounds when you like say 12 inch, you're thinking 90 degrees. I'm thinking 90 degrees, exactly. I try to get up to that, but yeah. it's, it's so fast. It's dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig like that. It's, you know, you get as high as you can to yeah. make it sound like it has a lot of volume. But, so, it's two different rudiments. You have the flam accent, and you have the pad of flaw flaw. Okay. So, why did you start by breaking down what both those just are on the snare? For sure. So, awesome. flam accent is going to be a right flam, left, right, and then a left flam, right, so the proper way to do it dynamically is like this. Like that. But now when I do it in context of this blast beat sound, I bring all those ghost notes up here. So like this. And when I'm doing that, every time I flam, I move that flam to a different symbol. So, flam, flam, like that. So, the reason you add in the pad of flaw flaw at the end is the triplets, one, so it's like, it's in like a, the accent is in a triplet form, I guess you could say every three notes. One, two, three, four, five. At the end, in order for it to make sense in the song, I had to cut it off short. Right. So, I did a pad of flaw flaw, it was the only thing that made sense. Um, so a pad of flaw flaw goes like this. Right flam, left, right, left flam. Like that. So when you repeat it, it goes like this. Like that. And now again, same thing. You bring all those notes up. It sounds like this. So, and again, there, when you do the pad of flaw flaw, da, 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 flam, flam, you move. And that's, the, that's probably the hardest part. Sick. It's, it's pretty tough. Um, and the entire time, every note you're doing, you are doing with your kick drum as well. So the whole time, the kick drum is doing like this. Like that. So, I'll play it just on the snare. And then, so maybe that way you can get used to doing your, that sequence of rudiments and stuff with the kicks. So it's like this. Like that. That's like great, it. man. That's a really great way to practice that and just develop yeah. it, get comfortable with it first. Exactly. So then I guess you have to learn, I mean. This is the hard part, learning to move it around the kit, exactly. right? Exactly. So. I could sit here. I'm not going to do the double bass. I'm just going to do closed hi-hat. Actually, no, that's stupid. I'm just going to do yeah. the double bass with nice. it. So I'm just going to move it around to random symbols like this. Yeah. That's great, man. Would you start by suggesting that um, if you're learning this for the first time, you practice just moving around the flame accent, just getting comfortable with that first? Yeah, definitely. Don't, don't worry about the kick drum and just do that. It would definitely Thinking work. Thinking 12 the whole time, uh -huh. everything's nice and loud. Yep, because otherwise it would be weird. Yeah. It wouldn't sound cool. It needs to be like very powerful and energetic sounding. Dude, that's the thing about this fill that blows my mind, and I think that the double bass really helps with that. Yeah, definitely. It really helps with the stabs. Exactly. But uh, how powerful it feels. Like yeah. even when you just played it off the top, um, it's like, man, it hits you. It's powerful, <laughs> dude. It's oh, a great thanks. idea. Yeah, it's a... Uh, I don't know, I was just 17, and that's, I feel like when I was that young, a lot of the creative juices were just constantly flowing, and I was just like, I had just started dabbling with rudiments, and it was all just kind of coming out. Awesome, Very dude. fresh, you know, so. And but yeah. you're just an old man. Now I'm super old, you know, wife and kids. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. Uh, 
<laughs> I know that's not true. Anyways, um, uh, dude, why don't you play us out, man? All right, cool.